Hello everybody, welcome to another Off The Shelf Board Game Review. This week we're going to be looking at Crossmaster Jr., a standalone game which is 100% compatible with the original Crossmaster game. What Crossmaster Jr. does is take the learn to play mechanics from the original Crossmaster Arena game, turn it into a little bit of an adventure game that's made for younger players, making this a game that suggested ages 7 and up, but quite honestly, this is definitely a game that's for ages 4 and up and for anybody who loves the Crossmaster universe. In Crossmaster Jr., each player is going to control a Crossmaster and they're going to be going on various quests. Each quest takes anywhere from about 5 to 10 minutes. And what each quest do is it's going to slowly introduce mechanics into the game and allow you to add more complexity to the game, going from a basic capture of flag style of game to all out war once you get to the seventh adventure. The really awesome thing about Crossmaster Jr. is it's not always about trying to attack and defeat and blow up your opponent. This actually adds a lot of variety, making it much better for the younger kids because sometimes when you're a younger kid, getting blown up by an adult isn't always the best way to have fun in a board game. The earlier missions of the game start off really simple where your simple objective is just to move around to make sure that your pet is not captured by an opponent. If your opponent captures a pet, they win three points to the first person to do it. If they're a second person to do it, they'll earn two victory points. And if they're the third person to do it, they're going to earn one victory point. Same with the last player remaining on the board. Like I said though, the really cool thing about Crossmaster Jr. is it starts off really simplistic, about 10% of the rules from basic Crossmaster Arena, and slowly amped up, amps up those rules till you got about 75 or 80% of the rules from Crossmaster Arena thrown in, including dice and the randomness that they may cause. And as I said, Crossmaster Jr. is 100% compatible with the base game, so if you have a child who has a favorite Crossmaster that they love to play, they can easily play that Crossmaster in the game because all these Crossmasters have the exact same abilities, and the really cool thing about the Crossmaster Jr. is that every single adventure is in one little rule book, meaning that each child gets their own little rule book, which is going to give the rules for that specific adventure, the stats for the Crossmaster during that adventure, and what special rules are being added slowly into the game. From just moving around to locking to opponents, and eventually getting the ability to attack and capture opponents and win the game. Crossmaster Jr. is an extremely simple, easy to teach, and easy to play game, which like I said makes it a fantastic game for the younger kids. But don't be scared off because like I said earlier, Crossmaster Jr. is 100% compatible with a full Crossmaster range of games. So once your kids have learned Crossmaster Jr. really, really well, you can graduate them into playing the full Crossmaster game. And they can even take their Crossmasters over because there are rules to bring these guys over into the big game. Or if you even want to, and if you want some more challenging two-player games, you can actually use these map boards in the full Crossmaster game, as, as you see these make for some tighter game boards, but you'll be pretty familiar with this game board size if you ever use the game boards from the dual packs. And as you see, I laminate all my dual boards because they're a little bit better because these are basically just folded sheets. And when you laminate them, they last a heck of a lot longer. Now how the Crossmaster Junior game works is what it's going to do is it's going to give you some basic instructions, which is going to start with the very first adventure and teach you just how to play the very basic game of Crossmaster stripping out a lot of the rules and making it simpler for the younger kids. And then what it does is each single adventure is going to slowly add one more rule onto the game, which becomes a permanent rule for the game as long as you're playing the later adventures. So the rules in adventure number one carry on to adventures two through seven. The rules in adventures two and three carry on through five, six, all the way up to seven, basically just continually adding to the rules and making the game just a little bit more complex, but it never reaches the complexity of the basic Crossmaster Arena game. Every single player is going to get a Crossmaster figure and they're going to get a Crossmaster book which matches your Crossmaster and it's going to tell you how to set up every single adventure, exactly how that sets up, exactly what kind of rules are in place for that adventure and how to win that adventure specifically. And what's going to happen is if you're the first person to reach your victory conditions, you're going to score three victory points. If you're the second to do so, you're going to get two victory points and then the third and the fourth player are going to get one victory point apiece. Before you play, you decide how many adventures you want to go on. And after you've gone on those total adventures, you're basically going to add up all your victory points. And the game calls them Gallons of Glory, just like basic Crossmaster. And after the end of all those adventures, whoever has the most Gallons of Glory is the overall victor. And the really neat thing is each one of these little adventures takes about five, pretty much ten minutes tops each. So even if you went through all seven adventures, you're looking at a very complete game that plays in well under an hour. And the reason why I prefaced it all with that is because I don't want to go through and teach you every single adventure because kind of the fun thing about playing Crossmaster Junior with your kids 
is slowly learning the, learning the concepts of the game and adding those concepts in to make it really feel like it's a really fun adventure game to play with the kids. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to play the basics of Crossmaster. If you know how to play Crossmaster Arena, you can already see how these basic mechanics are going to meld into the eventual full game. At the beginning of the game, each player picks their Crossmaster and will be placed on the board depending on exactly how many players you happen to have playing. If you look very closely on the board, you can see some numbers inside a footprint based on how many players you have, and those are going to be the starting position for every Crossmaster. So if we have a four-player game, we know that this, 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 and this spot are the starting positions. If we happen to have a three-player game, we see that three-player, three-player, and three-player, and also for a two-player, we see there's a two-player boot and a two-player boot. And since I'm going to show you a four-player game, we're just going to go ahead and add all four of our Crossmasters to the board in all the four-player starting positions. In some of the adventures you can attack, some of the adventures you can't, some of the adventures you need to free your pet, some of the adventures you start with your pet, and in some of the adventures, especially the first adventure, all you're trying to do is keep your pet from being captured by an opponent, because if somebody captures your pet, you get to keep playing and try to capture another player's pet, but the person in the pet captures successfully has managed to score victory points and they basically remove their crossmaster from the board but keep their own pet on the board still try and play that capture the flag game or prevent other players from scoring those points. There's a couple standard rules that apply for all of Crossmaster Junior and they're going to apply from the very first adventure all the way up to the final adventure and the very first rule is that every single player gets a basic amount of movement points and that's going to be listed on your character as MP and a green diamond with a number. And this game isn't asymmetrical. Every hero crossmaster has the same statistics. And again, that's to keep a little bit of simplicity. The asymmetrical gameplay is definitely what comes with Crossmaster Arena, the full game. So if you look at your adventure and you see your statistics, and every single one of these adventure books is going to have the statistics for your adventure right here on the same right hand page. The left hand page is going to tell you what the setup and the victory conditions. The right hand page is going to be on the statistics for your adventurer and also tell you exactly what rules have been added to the base game and are going to carry over into each additional adventure. So starting with the very first adventure we see that every single one of our crossmasters happens to have three movement points which means they can move up to three spaces and in crossmaster orthogonal movement is the only kind of movement allowed you can't move diagonal. So since every one of our crossmasters has three movement points whoever is the first player gets to move up to three spaces. And then after they move their crossmaster, they can move their pet as many spaces as their pet has movement points. And again, since this isn't asymmetrical, all the pets happen to have two movement points, so they can all move exactly two spaces. Also, again, no diagonal movement is allowed. Additionally, pets block movement, which means you can't move past your own pet. You have to actually move around your pet, meaning you have to move a little bit strategically. Other crossmasters block your movement, which means you can't move past another crossmaster. You're going to have to move around them to get past them. And also, you see that there's a scenery on the board, which happens to be in specific set of places, depending on the game board. And the game does come with two sets of these jigsaw game boards, which are double-sided, giving you a total of four adventure boards. And again, just like the rules, each one of these adventure boards are going to start slowly adding more rules, such as coins that you can pick up, cages that you need to break open to free your pets. And again, that's for later adventures and also the ability to buy additional pets, but again, that all gets in with the later adventures that add in more to the rules. Of course, terrain also blocks your movement, which are these pieces, like I said, were added to the board. Depending on what the board tells you to lay out the board, these taller totems block line of sight also, while these lower bushes don't block line of sight, but they do block movement. And the way line of sight works in Crossmaster Jr. is you draw an invisible line from the center of the square you're on right now to the center of the square of your target, and I should watch how I wore that because in Crossmaster, you never actually target another player. You always target another square. So that does mean, especially when you use the advanced rules, that you can target a square if there's no player in there for any reason you want to do that. But you basically target the center of your square to the center of the square that you want to use your power on. And if it happens to be within range and there's nothing blocking, which in this case there is something blocking, you have direct line of sight and you can use your special ability. In this case, you can't, but... In the case between these two crossmasters, this crossmaster could definitely use one of their special abilities on this crossmaster because they do happen to be within line of sight of each other. And as I said, while the basic gameplay for the very first adventure is more of a capture of the flag type of game, the game does get much more complex, but not too complex for the younger kids, especially when you get to adventure number seven, where you have to start worrying about tactical movement across the board. You have to start worrying about line of sight so you can attack your fellow opponent crossmasters with your special abilities and you also have to worry about picking up these comma coins and adding them to your treasure chest because you can use these comma coins to purchase 
pets and add them out onto the board to make you just a little more powerful and overpower your opponent crossmasters. And the way the rules work once you've added in all the full rules for Crossmaster Jr. is just like in the basic adventure, every Crossmaster only gets three movement points. And moving a square takes one of your movement points away. You can't move your pet until after you've moved your Crossmaster, but now you get the ability to start doing ranged attacks. Now every single Crossmaster has a ranged attack of one to five, and you can't attack in diagonals. It's basically a straight line only, and you're going to only hit somebody who's one to five squares away. So unfortunately, this Crossmaster couldn't hit this Crossmaster, but if they did happen to get into this square right here, they could hit this Crossmaster and this Crossmaster because both of these Crossmasters happen to be within five squares distance for their special attack. And each Crossmaster gets six action points. Their special attack uses five of those action points and picking up a coin off the board and adding it to your treasure chest uses one of your action points and also visiting one of the totems that's going to allow you to buy more pets takes one action point and a certain amount of gold coins from your treasure chest which you have to spend in, other, in order to bring out a pet out to your side and the strength of your pet that you can bring out to your side is going to be based on how many coins you spend to bring them out the weakest pet costs two coins while the strongest pet costs a total of six coins to bring them out to your side in this case we brought out the strongest pet because he costs six points or six coins if we happen to have six coins but if we didn't we couldn't afford it so you only bring out what you can afford if one of the crossmasters happens to get hit by a special attack from one of their opponents they're going to gain a wound now remember it's always good to remember that in crossmaster you don't take damage you always gain wounds that's one of the biggest things that causes confusion for players when they play the full game of crossmaster arena is understand the difference that in crossmaster you're not getting injured you're gaining wounds if you understand that concept it's much easier to convert into Crossmaster Arena and learn exactly how all the special powers for all the Crossmasters actually work in the game. So like I said, you're going to gain a wound if you happen to take damage. Every Crossmaster has eight hit points. If you knock out one Crossmaster and you're the first person to knock out an opponent's Crossmaster, you're going to go ahead and gain three of those gallons of glory. You're going to keep going, trying to be the last Crossmaster standing. If you happen to be the last Crossmaster standing and defeat all your opponents, you're going to get a total of three gallons of glory. The first Crossmaster knocked out is only going to get one. Second Crossmaster knocked out is going to get one, and the second Crossmaster knocked out is two. And again, you're going to add up all your gallons of glory. Whoever has the most gallons of glory for the adventure you guys went on, or for the series of adventures, is going to be the grand winner of Crossmaster Jr. and the adventure. The combat and every, all the other actions in Crossmaster Jr. are going to be exactly like the basic game of Crossmaster Arena. Everything is going to be resolved with a dice roll, and you're going to be looking for a certain side on the dice to determine exactly how much damage you're going to do. And your opponent is going to have to roll the dice to see if they can avoid the damage that you're trying to do to them. Basically, what you're looking for is every single Crossmaster is going to hit automatically and do one point of damage when they use their fireball against a different Crossmaster. So in this example, this Crossmaster decided they wanted to fireball the Time Wizard over here. They would do a basic one point of damage, and then they're going to roll a die, and they're going to look for one of three results. They're either going to look for an explosion pattern, they're going to look for an explosion and a boot, and they're going to decide to turn it into an explosion. Or finally, they're going to look for the wild card symbol, and that allows them to turn the face of the die to anything they want, and obviously they're going to turn it into an explosion. If they happen to get an explosion, they're now doing two points of damage, and now the target needs to roll a die. They're looking for one of two symbols. They're either looking for a shield, which is going to block one point of damage, or they're looking for that wild card symbol, which is going to allow them to rotate the dice to any side they choose. And obviously, if you're being attacked, you're going to choose to rotate to the shield. The shield's going to take off one of those points of damage. So if this Crossmaster fireballed this Crossmaster, got an explosion, they're now doing two points of damage. This Crossmaster happens to roll a shield. They're going to block one of those points of damage, and they're going to take one point of damage total. They now have one of the eight total damage they can take. If they take eight damage, they're going to be defeated. The additional rule that's from basic Crossmaster Arena, which is in Crossmaster Junior, is the locks and stopping players from walking by you, which means that if a Crossmaster is ever next to you, and if they want to move from an adjacent square to a square next to, they need to roll a boot to get past you, and you need to roll a magnet to stop them from walking past you. If this Crossmaster is trying to pass by this Crossmaster, they'd simply roll, and if they got anything Except a magnet, this crossmaster can keep moving. But if this crossmaster happen to roll the wild card or they happen to roll the magnet, this crossmaster is now required to roll a boot or the wild card to get by. If they fail to do so, their movement stops immediately.
Like I said earlier, if you're familiar with Crossmaster Arena, you'll notice a lot of the mechanics from Crossmaster Junior do carry over into Crossmaster Arena. You have all the basic gameplay that's in the game. The only difference between Crossmaster Junior and Crossmaster Arena itself is that you don't have the unique powers of all the Crossmasters thrown into play. But this is a great, great, fantastic jumping off point to teach the younger players the basics of Crossmaster and eventually work them into playing the full game of Crossmaster Arena. That's basically everything you need to know to play Crossmaster Junior. Stay tuned for part two of my video series where I'm going to try to sit my kids down for a game of Crossmaster Junior so you can see how to play. I can't guarantee I'm going to get them to play because my kids, whenever they're in front of a camera, become instant, immediate hams and love to ham it up for the camera. So if they get a little bit too rambunctious, you're going to end up seeing me play, but I hopefully we can get them to sit down and have some fun with Crossmaster Junior, a game they really, really love.